Virtual Desktop is an application that lets you use your PC in VR on a giant virtual screen. With access to your computer, you can play your PC games, watch movies, Netflix, Hulu, or your favorite streaming service. The new mobile version compatible with Oculus Go, Gear VR, and now Oculus Quest allows you to access up to four computers remotely over Wi-Fi or from anywhere around the world. It is compatible with Windows 8.1 and Windows 10. Mac support will be added later this year. Most laptops and desktop computers sold in the last eight years should be powerful enough. But if you want the best experience, an NVIDIA or AMD graphics card is recommended. The application is optimized for high quality, low latency streaming, so it will require a good 5 GHz AC router. Connecting your computer using an Ethernet cable is highly recommended if that's something you can do. Once you launch the app in VR, it will direct you to the virtual desktop website to download the streamer app. Once installed, it will prompt you to enter your Oculus username. No need to create a separate account. The streamer icon will turn orange when it is ready to accept connections. If you experience any issues connecting to your computer, I recommend reading the frequently asked questions on the website. Once connected, you can interact with the desktop using your controllers. The triggers act as a left mouse button, while the B button on your right controller acts as a right click. The thumbsticks can be used to scroll. Virtual Desktop currently relies on the Windows Touch Keyboard for input. It doesn't always show up automatically, so I recommend right clicking the taskbar and enabling the Show Touch Keyboard button, which will let you bring it up manually. Pressing the Options button on your left controller brings up the control panel. At the top, you will see the clock as well as the battery levels of your headset and controllers. In the Computers tab, you will see your Wi-Fi's signal strength, frequency, and speed. Below, you will find all your computers and switching between them only takes a few seconds. The Environments tab lets you choose from a variety of sceneries. With the first four environments, your desktop will be displayed on a floating screen and you can adjust the size, curve, distance, and height. You can fine tune the angle with the reset view button or have it follow your head movements with the headlock feature. With the touch controllers on Quest, you can grab the screen, resize it, and place it anywhere you'd like. The other environments have a fixed screen that can't be resized, but there are many to choose from. You can switch between them instantly without ever seeing a loading screen. Only one monitor is streamed with the mobile version of Virtual Desktop. This is because the screen is rendered at very high quality on a time warp layer and it is quite expensive for mobile GPUs. You can however cycle through your monitors by clicking outside the screen and clicking the switch monitor button. From the desktop toolbar, you can also toggle the various 3D modes to watch 3D side-by-side -side or over-under movies. Some games, like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, provide a side-by-side -side mode out of the box. Jonah, I'm here. Just a little stuck. Uh, a rock pin my leg. Back to the control panel, the settings tab has many options. Let's go over them. Auto Connect will allow a virtual desktop to automatically connect to the last used computer. Use Optimal Resolution will change the resolution of your physical monitor to match the streaming resolution depending on which headset you use. 
This improves the image quality, so I recommend leaving that on. Your monitor will go back to its original resolution once you disconnect. If you enable Emulate Gamepad on PC, a gamepad paired with your headset will act as if it was paired with your computer. This will let you play your PC games with a gamepad from anywhere. The environment quality option affects the quality of the scenery and a higher value will increase the battery usage. The video frame rate determines how smooth the desktop image will be. A lower frame rate will give you longer battery life if you are just watching movies for example, which only need 24 or 30 frames per second. The video bitrate limit affects the quality of the video stream. Use a higher limit if you are playing fast action games, otherwise leaving it at medium should be sufficient. Dynamic lighting is the feature that illuminates the environment based on what you are watching. By default, this will be enabled when the controllers remain still and become inactive, but you can choose to always have it enabled or disable it completely. The background music option lets you disable the music played when you aren't connected to a computer. One of the cool features of virtual desktop is the microphone pass-through option. Once enabled, your voice will be sent to your PC so you can play games that use voice chat. You can also use Cortana. Hey Cortana, do I have any appointments on Monday? I'm finding one event Monday. Here it is. The input options allow you to disable desktop interaction with the touch controllers if you want to use a regular mouse and keyboard, for example. Virtual Desktop supports Bluetooth mice, keyboards, and trackpads. You can pair those using the Oculus Phone app by selecting Pair Controller and Pair Gamepad option. Note that you can also use the keyboard and mouse, which are already connected to your computer. By default, the thumbsticks on your touch controllers allow you to scroll vertically. You can also scroll horizontally, but this is known to cause issues in Google Chrome, which is why it is disabled by default. When resetting orientation, the theater environments will normally snap to the horizon for comfort reasons. The Allow Custom Orientation in All Environments option allows you to reset orientation and have the environment follow you at any angle. This might not be comfortable for everyone, which is why it is provided as an option. Finally, the Boost Clock Rates option is useful to prevent hiccups when recording videos like I am doing now or casting to another device. It shouldn't be enabled in normal scenarios as it increases the battery usage considerably. Hopefully this answers most of the questions you had feel free to join the Discord server or reach out to me directly through the chat feature on the website. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.